So what we do tonight is not a regular talk. It will be a guided meditation for you. Please come to a good sitting position. I will be reading a sutta. This is Majjhima Nikaya 148, Chachakka Sutta, six sets of six. And upon hearing this, 60 monks became enlightened in front of the Buddha. We don't have 60 here, but we have our hopes in the hearts. Every time this teaching was given, 60 monks became enlightened. So this is a very powerful teaching. Ready? Thus have I heard. On one occasion, the Blessed One was living at Savatthi in Jeta's Grove, Anathapindika's Park. There. He addressed the students thus, Students, Venerable Sir, they replied, The Blessed One said this, Monks, I shall teach you the Dhamma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing. I shall reveal a holy life that is utterly perfect and pure that is, the six sets of six. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, Venerable Sir, the students replied. The Blessed One said this. The six internal bases should be understood. The six external bases should be understood. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. The six classes of contact should be understood. The six classes of feeling should be understood. The six classes of craving should be understood. The six internal bases should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said. There are the eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, the mind base. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six internal bases should be understood. This is the first sect of six. The six external bases should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said? There are the form base, the sound base, the odor base, the flavor base, the tangible base, and the mind object base. So it was with reference to this that it was said, the six external bases should be understood. This is the second set of six. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said? Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of consciousness should be understood. This is a, the third set of six. The six classes of contact should be understood. So it was said. And with reference to what was this said? Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. 
dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. Dependent on body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of contact should be understood. This is the fourth set of six. The six classes of feeling should be understood. So it was said and with reference to what was he said. Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there is eye feeling. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. Dependent on the nose and odorous, nose consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. Depen dependent on the mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six, class six classes of feeling should be understood. This is the fifth set of six. The six classes of craving should be understood, so it was said. And with reference to what was this said? Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there is eye feeling. With eye feeling as condition, there is eye craving. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. With ear feeling as condition, there is ear craving. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. With nose feeling as condition, there is nose craving. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. With tongue feeling as condition, there is tongue craving. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. With body feeling as condition, there is body craving. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. With mind feeling as condition, there is mind craving. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of craving should be understood. This is the sixth set of six. <clears throat> Demonstration of not self. If anyone says the I is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the I is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the I is self. Thus, the I is not self. If anyone says forms are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of forms are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say 
forms are not self. Thus, the I is not self, forms are not self. If anyone says, I consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I consciousness is self. Thus, the I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self. If anyone says, I contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I contact is self. Thus, I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self. If anyone says, I feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I feeling is self. Thus, the I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self, I feeling is not self. If anyone says, I craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I craving is self. Thus, the I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self, I feeling is not self, I craving is not self. If anyone says, the ear is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the ear is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, the ear is self, thus the ear is not self. If anyone says, sounds are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of sounds are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say sounds are self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self. If anyone says ear consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, ear consciousness is, is self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self. If anyone says, ear contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, ear contact is self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self. If anyone says, ear feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, ear feeling is self. Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self, ear feeling is not self. If anyone says, ear craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, ear craving is self. 
Thus, the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self, ear feeling is not self, ear craving is not self. If anyone says the nose is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the nose is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. It follows, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the nose is not nose is self, thus the nose is not self. If anyone says odors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of odors are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, odors are self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self. If anyone says, nose consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, nose consciousness is self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self. If anyone says, nose contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, nose contact is self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self. If anyone says, nose feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, nose feeling is self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness, consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self, nose feeling is not self. If anyone says, nose craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, nose craving is self. Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self, nose feeling is not self, nose craving is not self. If anyone says, the tongue is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the tongue is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, the tongue is self. Thus, the tongue is not self. If anyone says, flavors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of flavors are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, flavors are self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self. If anyone says, tongue consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, tongue consciousness is self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self. If anyone says tongue, conscious, tongue contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, tongue contact is self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self, 
tongue contact is not self. If anyone says tongue feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue feeling is self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self, tongue contact is not self, tongue feeling is not self. If anyone says tongue craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue craving is self. Thus, the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is are not self, tongue contact is not self, tongue feeling is not self, tongue craving is not self. If anyone says the body is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the body is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the body is self, thus the body is not self. If anyone says tangibles are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tangibles are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tangibles are self, thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self. If anyone says body consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body consciousness is self. Thus, the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self. If anyone says body contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body contact is self. Thus, the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self. If anyone says body feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body feeling is self. Thus, the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self, body feeling is not self. If anyone says body craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body craving is self. Thus, the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self, body feeling is not self, body craving is not self. If anyone says mind is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind is self. Thus, mind is not self. If anyone says mind objects, objects are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind objects are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind objects are self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self. If anyone says mind consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, 
it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind consciousness is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self. If anyone says mind contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is not that is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind contact is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self. If anyone says mind feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind feeling is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self, mind feeling is not self. If anyone says mind craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind craving is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self, mind feeling is not self, mind craving is not self. The origination of identity. Now, students, this is the way leading to the origination of identity. One regards the I thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards forms thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I feeling thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards I craving thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards the ear thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards sounds thus. This is mine. This I am. This is myself. One regards ear consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the nose thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards others thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose feeling thus, this is mine. This I am, this is myself. One regards no craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the tongue thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards flavors thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the body thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tangibles thus, this is mine, this I am. This is myself. One regards body consciousness thus. 
this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind objects thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. The cessation of identity. Now, students, this is the way leading to the cessation of identity. One regards the I thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards forms thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards I consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards I contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards I feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards I craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards the year thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards sounds thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards the nose thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards odors thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards nose consciousness thus, this is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards nose craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the tongue thus. This is not mine. This I am not, this is not myself. One regards flavors thus, this is not mine. This I am not, this is not myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus, this is not mine. This I am not, this is not myself. One regards tongue contact thus, this is not mine. This I am not, this is not myself. One regards tongue feeling thus, this is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tongue craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the body thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards tangibles thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body contact thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards body craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards the mind thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind objects thus. This is not mine. This I am not. 
This is not myself. One regards mind consciousness thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind contact thus. This is not mine. This is this I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind feeling thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. One regards mind craving thus. This is not mine. This I am not. This is not myself. The underlying tendencies. Students, dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is I contact. With I contact as condition, there arises an I feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither, painful, neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant I feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pain pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant I feeling without ab abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful eye feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that ear feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on nose and orders, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. 
when one is touched by a neither pa pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, without ab abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises a tongue feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. This is impossible. Students, dependent on body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant body feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that body feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students, dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, 
then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one sorrows, grieves and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one should here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful mind feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. This is impossible. The abandonment of underlying tendencies. <coughs> Students, dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is I contact. With eye contact as condition, there arises an eye feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant eye feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students, that one, sh one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant I feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful I feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful I feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students, dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that ear feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students, dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. 
the meeting of the three is nose contact with no nose contact as condition there arises a nose feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful when one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling if one does not delight in it welcome it and remain hold into it then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one when one is touched by a painful nose feeling if one does not sorrow grieve and lament does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one when one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling if one understands as it actually is the origination the disappearance the gratification the danger and the escape in regard to that nose feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling by ab abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency in regard to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this that is possible students dependent on the tongue and flavors tongue consciousness arises the meeting of the three is tongue contact with tongue contact as condition there arises a tongue feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful when one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling if one does not delight in it welcome it and remain hold into it then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one when one is touched by a painful tongue feeling if one does not sorrow grieve and lament does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one when one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling if one understands as it actually is the origination the disappearance the gratification the danger and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is possible students dependent on body and tangibles body consciousness arises the meeting of the three is body contact with body contact as condition there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful when one is touched by a pleasant body feeling if one does not delight in it welcome it re and remain hold into it then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one when one is touched by a painful body feeling if one does not sorrow grieve and lament does not weep beating one's breast and becoming distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one when one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful body feeling if one understands as it actually is the origination the disappearance the gratification the danger and the escape in regard to that body feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling 
by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful body feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is possible students dependent on mind and mind objects mind consciousness arises the meeting of the three is mind contact with mind contact as condition there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful when one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling if one does not delight in it welcome it and remain hold into it then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one when one is touched by a painful mind feeling if one does not sorrow grieve and lament does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one when one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling if one understands as it actually is the origination the disappearance the gratification the danger and the escape in regard to that mind feeling then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the true the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion for painful mind feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is possible liberation seeing thus students a well taught student becomes disenchanted with the eye disenchanted with the forms disenchanted with eye consciousness disenchanted with eye contact disenchanted with eye feeling disenchanted with eye craving he becomes disenchanted with the ear disenchanted with sounds disenchanted with ear consciousness disenchanted with ear contact disenchanted with ear feeling disenchanted with ear craving he becomes disenchanted with the nose disenchanted with odors disenchanted with nose consciousness disenchanted with nose contact disenchanted with nose feeling disenchanted with nose craving he becomes disenchanted with the tongue disenchanted with flavors disenchanted with tongue consciousness disenchanted with tongue contact disenchanted with tongue feeling disenchanted with tongue craving he becomes disenchanted with the body disenchanted with tangibles disenchanted with body consciousness disenchanted with body contact disenchanted with body feeling disenchanted with body craving he becomes disenchanted with mind disenchanted with mind objects disenchanted with mind consciousness disenchanted with mind contact disenchanted with mind feeling disenchanted with mind craving being disenchanted he becomes dispassionate through dispassion his mind is liberated when it is liberated there comes the knowledge it is liberated he understands birth it is destroyed the holy life has been lived what had to be done has been done there is no more be- no more come into any state of being that is what the blessed one said the students were satisfied and delighted in the blessed one's words now while this discourse was being spoken through not clinging the minds of 60 students were liberated from the taints please continue your meditation there is no sharing of merits please continue seat uh, remaining seated as well continue your meditation